It is back, ladies and gentlemen. We now have modding back in Gloomhaven Digital. It's been a while since the devs have actually updated this feature and it kind of lapsed a while ago. So the mods weren't able to be updated. And if you updated your game, unfortunately, the mods would no longer work. But it's good to see that it is now back in the open beta branch of the game. And it looks like it's going to be there for the foreseeable future and should be hopefully kept up to date and working. So now is a great time to start working on those mod ideas that you might have. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add mods to your game, how you can access the different mods and how you can use them. Also, how you can use the level editor to create your own custom scenarios and even maybe your own custom campaign and go into a few other little tabletop things that are going on, which I think you might be interested in. Don't forget to hit the like button and click subscribe if you do enjoy the content. It really helps me here on YouTube. And I do also stream regularly on Twitch at twitch.tv slash request every Monday, Wednesday, Sunday. Always Gloomhaven pretty much nowadays. So come hang out. And yeah, you can always ask me any questions you have there. Okay, let's get stuck in on how to use mods with Gloomhaven Digital. You may need to switch your game to the open beta branch to access mods. In order to do this, right click on your Gloomhaven installation in Steam, go to betas and then select the open beta branch of the game. Once you've done this, when you click play, you should have a pop up menu to say play Gloomhaven or play Gloomhaven with mods. So once you reach the main screen, you will have modding and level editor. So you can go across to modding. The first thing you want to do is go to manage mods. Here's where you're going to have a list of all of the mods that you have subscribed to in the Steam Workshop. So if you haven't got any mods, which if it's the first time you won't, just click on the visit Steam Workshop to try and find some mods. So on the workshop page, you've got all the different mods that are available and what you can subscribe to and add to your game. There are not that many here at the moment. They say this is a bit of a growing community and this is obviously something that is going to be fleshed out more and more as more and more people get involved in the game. But it's great to see that we already have quite a lot of translation work going on, which is which is awesome to see. So hopefully that they can be fully realized. There's also somebody implementing Jaws of the Lion. So that will be exciting to see if that ever kind of comes to full fruition. And then you've got even simple mods like this that just reverts the stamina potion to what is the the actual board game version right the pre-nerf stamina potion if you really really wanted it a mod that i've been playing at the moment on mondays is the increased difficulty mod from myth i really really recommend this mod what this does is it replaces all of the difficulties in the game for a new set of difficulties that are much harder so now you can play up to plus four party level and plus 33 percent monsters on the highest level difficulty i'm currently playing at just plus four no plus 33 percent until i get some more levels and some more experience under my belt but it is a really really good way to challenge yourself in the game unfortunately it can't go above the level seven uh, party cap at the moment but that could be something that could be changed but at the moment that does cap out at level seven but this is a really great way to challenge yourself if you're an experienced player of the game Remember though that this is still early days and still early access so not all mods may work you may come up with some bugs but as this thing evolves and as the game moves out of early access hopefully this will become a lot more stable once you've chosen a mod that you'd like to add to your game just click on subscribe and it's going to be basically into your game you will have to relaunch the game though before this will actually be downloaded so you will have to restart your game you can actually go into the workshop just through the gloomhaven uh, kind of community tab so you don't necessarily have to open the game to access the workshop you can actually just go direct into the workshop from the gloomhaven page if you would like to create your own mod you go over to the create new mod choose a mod type and then you can choose what you would like to mod so let's say guildmaster mode then you can obviously put your name and description as it would show in the steam workshop and here is where you can upload your file that actually contains all of your modding information i'm no coding whiz so don't ask me advice on how to actually do this part and create your own mods but there is a nice active channel in the official gloomhaven digital discord which i will link down below if you would like to ask any questions or maybe understand how this part actually works so you can create your own mods once you have the mods installed that you want to use then you can go to custom rule sets and you're going to want to create a new rule set and you're going to create it for either the campaign or guildmaster whichever one you intend to play we've only got guildmaster at the moment type in what you'd like to obviously call this uh, rule set so let's say very hard and i'll select all of the different mods that you would like to use and hit create once you've done that it should pop up here in this little list click on this and then you just want to click on compile compile will then basically bring all of the mods together load them all in for you so you're ready to go and once that is finished compiling you should be able to hit the play button and then you're away and you will probably have to start a brand new save because with each new adventure that you go on you will actually need to create a new save but as you can see here we've got 
the added difficulty uh, modifiers. You can also create custom levels inside the level editor itself. Here is also where you can load custom levels that you may have downloaded from the workshop and play them with your different parties. Also, this is where you can go to create new levels or load any of your old ones that maybe you've created yourself. So I'm not going to go into crazy detail of how the level editor works. It's fairly simple to work out. The first step you need to do is to select all of the different tiles you would like for your scenario and create your map of tiles that you like. Place all of your doors down and then everything will pop up in front of you and then you can start adding details to your levels. Even I managed to find this very, very easy and straightforward and I have little to no experience with these kinds of things. I actually used the level editor to help me shoot some of the monster situations in my ultimate monster movement video that I did. So check that video out, but that's how I shot a lot of those different scenes to try and set up different requirements and, and situations that I wanted to, to show. Then you can start adding the different monsters, spawn points if you like, all of the different detail that kind of flesh out into a full scenario, including being able to do scenario wide effects, you know, fusing different elements at different times, putting in custom messages, events, chests, gold, all of that stuff can all be added. And you can also use the appearance feature to actually change the different styles. So if you want a cave or if you want a forest, all of these different things you can do uh, and even change the skybox itself for the level. So there's lots of different variety here that you can do and you can mess around with. And I really encourage people to take a look at this because it's very simple to use and very nice really. So if you've got any ideas for different scenarios and things, then definitely worth a look. There are currently some limitations really to what is moddable in the game. Unfortunately, we can't modify the base rules of the game. So all of you people who might want to bring across a certain house rule that you might want, unfortunately, you're going to have to play by the book. If you would like to bring in your own custom models for characters, that's unfortunately not available at the moment. You can't bring in any custom animations or stuff like that to do with it. And you can't add unique abilities that aren't already in the game, but you could repurpose abilities that are in the game in order to create your own custom classes or characters. You can modify items, you can modify cards to some degree, and you can modify the game settings and you can modify enemies and you can adjust XP and things like that. While you certainly can't modify the game to an extent that you may be able to on tabletop and in paper, there is definitely some scope here to have some fun and to get creative and make some interesting scenarios and maybe some interesting new characters or new different mods to the different game modes and things like that, which I think gives you a lot of things to play around with. I would love the opportunity to play some viewer made mods or viewer made scenarios. So if you do fancy giving it a crack, make sure to put a comment down below and maybe one day I'll play some on stream and we can have a fun stream where we play some different community mods and maps that people have done. We're still in the infancy of modding, but it's great to see that the devs are actually embracing the community and people to allow us to make this custom content instead of maybe locking everything down and stopping us from doing so. It's really nice to see, and hopefully in the future, this will lead to lots of really nice community projects because although very niche, having a good community behind a game and a good modding community behind a game can keep a game going for years and years and years. Just look at Skyrim. It also would have been a great shame to lose that kind of toy box feel that you get with owning a physical board game where you can play your own rules or be able to create your own campaigns or your own characters and just kind of mess around with it because it's a physical product that you own. So props to the devs. It's really good to see and I hope we see more and more creative content as time goes on. Speaking of community content, in the tabletop world, there's actually a few projects that I've got my eye on from fans. We have the Crimson Scales project by Redditor Boardgame613. This is a huge fan-made expansion, but to be honest, I don't think it's very fair to call it an expansion. It's essentially a full game at this point. It uses 11 custom classes from the community, each one with its own 3D model as well, plus new original artwork from Alexander, the original Gloomhaven artist, so it should all fit in nicely with all of the other characters and the of Gloomhaven. It's got over 60 new scenarios, over 50 new items, and just loads more stuff going on. It looks to be one of the most ambitious fan projects I've ever seen for any game, and it certainly rivals 
a video game full conversion mod for its scope that it's going for. They plan on making this available on both Tabletop Simulator and as a print online product with no markup, which is incredibly nice of this person for all of the amount of work that they must have put in with other members of the community too. I will be keeping my fingers crossed that I can get a print version here in the UK. Historically, we've missed out such as all of the cards that replaced the, the cards in Forgotten Circles. Unfortunately, we kind of missed out a little bit here on the UK, but hopefully for this one, we can find someone in the UK to be able to print this. And yeah, this is definitely something that I've got my eye on. Also, renowned fantasy and science fiction author Lisa Smedman has just released a very impressive custom spin-off campaign featuring the four currently known Valrath characters from Gloomhaven and Jaws of the Lion and Frosthaven called Blood and Sand for both Tabletop Simulator and as a print and play. Set in the Red Desert, the homeland of the Valrath race, it features a horde of new enemies, items, scenarios, and even has unique overarching campaign mechanics, such as exploration and water consumption as you traverse the campaign map, filling it in as you go. This campaign also features the Deathwalker class, so this could be a great excuse to try them out before the full Frosthaven launch to see if that character floats your boat. I think it's great that we're seeing some more experimentation here with higher level campaign mechanics and story, and not just custom classes every time and I could honestly see that these smaller more kind of focused style campaigns with their own unique mechanics being a really big success I mean if you just look at Jaws of the Lion and what that did I see there to be plenty of scope for smaller Gloomhaven products maybe like this that could really fill a niche and I think a lot of people will enjoy although not currently possible obviously with the limitations we have in Gloomhaven Digital, it would be really awesome to see if something as high quality and ambitious as these two projects could come to digital sometime in the future. And it's really incredible to see what the community can do building on the rich world and the great gameplay systems that Gloomhaven has. If you're interested in checking these out for yourselves, I will link both of these projects down below in the descriptions for you to check out. And Blood and Sand is available right away now for you to try on Tabletop Simulator. So that pretty much wraps up today's video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to let me know in the comments if you're really excited about the Blood and Sand or the Crimson Scales projects, and also any kind of mods and ideas that you might have for creating custom content in Gloomhaven Digital. Really, we have a lot of possibilities now at our disposal to create our own content, and it's just really exciting time to be a Gloomhaven fan and plenty to do while we wait for Frosthaven to come out. If you did enjoy the video guys please do consider liking and subscribing it helps me out so much here on youtube and i've got lots of other gloomhaven guides and content already on the channel and lots more to come in the future including lots of frosthaven stuff further down the line i also stream regularly on twitch at twitch.tv slash requests where you can catch me every monday wednesday and sunday playing gloomhaven so if you've got any questions you can always come and get me there but apart from that guys that's all that's left for today's video as always thank you again so much for watching i will catch you in the next one bye I think so. Yeah. Oh, oh, Scout oh, wins. That's, that's the place <laughs> from Scout wins. <laughs> <laughs> that's the place so, from. Uh, uh, Isaac, at this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh, for allies in the digital version? <laughs>